section six of favorite fairy tales retold this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b favorite fairy tales retold by julia darrow cowles the nightingale from anderson many long years ago the emperor of china made a very great discovery he was reading in a book which was a very unusual thing for him to do and he read the words but the most wonderful thing in all the empire of china is the song of the nightingale what is this cried the emperor the nightingale in my own empire and i have never met her who is she i must find her i must hear her sing it is strange he added that people of other countries know more about my empire than i do myself now and then one may really learn something from books so the emperor summoned a lord-in-waiting and said to him i have just read about the song of the nightingale but i do not know her see that she appears at court this evening i must hear her sing the lord-in-waiting bowed very low and hastened away he never had heard of the nightingale either and had no idea where she was to be found but he ran all through the castle upstairs and down through corridors and chambers and everywhere he inquired about the nightingale but no one knew who she was or where she could be found the lord-in-waiting bowed low before the emperor and told him this what exclaimed the emperor the song of the nightingale is the most wonderful thing in my kingdom and no one knows who she is she must be brought to the court this evening if she is not the whole court shall be trampled upon sing pei cried the lord-in-waiting and again he searched the castle and half the court ran after him for they did not want to be trampled upon at length a simple little kitchen maid heard the uproar and timidly she said i know the nightingale i can show you where she lives indeed i have often heard her sing at that the whole court set out on the heels of the lord-in-waiting and he in turn ran after the little kitchen maid they left the castle passed through the beautiful gardens of the emperor and at last found themselves in the deep green woods none of the court ever had been there before then the little kitchen maid pointed to a small gray bird perched upon the branch of a tree there is the nightingale she said the lord-in-waiting could scarcely recover from his surprise he never had dreamed that the nightingale would prove to be a sober little gray bird but he delivered the emperor's message and bade the little bird appear at court that evening i sing best among the green trees said the nightingale but if the emperor wishes i will come the castle was decorated for the occasion and a wonderful golden cage was made for the nightingale at the appointed time she came and when she sang her song was so clear and pure and sweet that tears formed in the emperor's eyes and ran down upon his cheeks when she had finished the emperor was so pleased that he said she should remain at court she should live in the golden cage and should have many attendants to wait upon her he even offered to hang his golden slipper about her neck but this the nightingale declined she would have been much happier in her home in the green wood but what the emperor commands must be done so she lived at court in a golden cage close beside the emperor's couch and she sang whenever the emperor commanded one day a packet came addressed to the emperor perhaps it is another book said he but when it was opened he found not a book but a most marvellous bird it was made of silver and gold studded with precious jewels and inside the bird were springs and wheels so that when they were wound the bird could sing truly this were a new marvel and when the emperor had heard the jeweled bird sing he cared no more for the true nightingale and she was allowed to fly away to her home in the green woods the jeweled bird was placed in the golden cage and the golden slipper was hung about her neck many times a day the golden bird was wound and made to sing for the emperor it was much grander than a living bird for any one could hear a living bird sing but one morning when the attendant wound the springs there was a sudden whirr the spring had broken the jeweled bird could sing no more it was sent away to be mended but no one in all the emperor's kingdom knew how to repair it a watchmaker did the best that he could but after that it could only be wound once a year 
and then it had to be done very carefully many many moons passed and then one day it was whispered that the emperor was very ill it was not thought that he could live he lay very still and white on his silken couch and his attendants were frightened and thought him dead so they hastened away to tell the people that the emperor was dead but when they had gone the emperor turned his head toward the little golden bird and whispered music i want music but the little bird could not sing for there was no one there to wind it music you little golden bird whispered the emperor i have loaded you with gifts sing to me now but the jeweled bird could not sing the emperor turned his head what was that at the open window the little gray nightingale had heard that the emperor was ill and she had flown to the window to sing to him and in a moment her sweet clear song filled all the room with melody she sang of life and hope and as she sang the emperor's cheeks grew ruddy and his strength returned the door opened and the attendants came softly in to care for the dead emperor but what was their astonishment when he arose and said good morning End of section 6